Hello, beautiful souls. How are you today? I want to give you another shadow work series video. This one is really about um, coming to terms with the fact that we only control ourselves. I know it's a shocker in a world full of control freaks who literally think they have control over other people, places, and things. They don't. You don't. We don't. It's okay. We're going to get through it. So I want to pull you out of the matrix for a minute. Pull you into universal consciousness. In the universe, there are universal laws. These are our principles, um, guidelines, and they are the laws, the principles, and the guidelines that as a soul being, you should really be focused on. They matter more to the overall health of your soul and your well-being than other laws and guidelines that we deal with here in the matrix. So let's just pop out of that for a minute. The law of one, according to Ra, is some basis, not a complete, but some basis for the universal laws. When I talk about shadow work and we start to come to terms with events that have occurred in our life and we go down the, the unpackaging of that trauma or that event, and then you also have to come to terms with the fact that they played a part in your soul contract and it's their free will choice. Once they arrive on the planet and in your vortex to carry out that predetermined role in your soul contract and vice versa. Typically souls of the same soul pod decide to incarnate in the same time periods over and over and over again. So you're all incarnated together in the 1800s. You're all incarnated together in the 1900s. You're all incarnated together in the 2000s. You see where I'm going with this? So as your soul requires karma balancing and as your soul needs to experience new things to fully grow and evolve and expand into the fully embodied soul being you're intended to be, we each take turns in being that negative polarity person or that positive polarity person in each other's lives in the life stream. So universal laws are really a combination of science, spirit, and metaphysics. It is harder, I think, for the really concrete thinkers or really scientific folks um, to wrap their proverbial brain around this because it's really not about the brain. It's really about your energy and then it's about your soul contract and it's about who you really are. And identifying who you are as a soul being and, and why you raised your hand and volunteered for this mission. And what is it that you're actually supposed to be putting your energy toward? So there's multiple universal laws that actually become upheld when we honor free will choice. My direct question to source creator is this. Is it a, a true statement that... The law of action, the law of cause and effect, the law of compensation, the law of relativity, the law of polarity, and the law of rhythm all are upheld when honoring free will choice. And this is Source's answer. Yes, Lucy, this is why it is a, a law that all benevolent beings honor and uphold as it affects us very deeply and it's far-reaching. The darkness tramples over these laws and guidelines, but their actions do not release us of our consequences in relation to their acts. So when we are faced with a negative act, again, I'm not the only one that says this. It's true. It is more about our reaction to an act. 
than the actual act itself. It is more important that we be in control of our actions as a response to an event. So real quick, law of action. Manifestation requires aligned action. And this is referred to being aligned in your thoughts, your frequency, your intentions, and your actions. So they're all aligned. So if you're going to say that today you're going to go out and um, give 10 random people hugs and your thoughts are doubtful that you're going to find 10 people you feel like hugging and your frequency is in flux. You're not exactly sure if this is what you want to do, but it sounds like a good idea. And your intentions are less than a hundred percent. So you have, you're doubting the, the action, your, your frequencies are not really aligned and your intentions are wavering. So you're not going to manifest the outcome you think you're going to manifest. It's going to turn out and be quite the crap show. So when we are fully aligned, things flow. It's not a force. You don't have to try to manipulate everyone in your vortex. You don't have to try to be the control freak of the people, places, and things in your life because you're in alignment and things are flowing. Okay, law of cause and effect. Every action has a consequence. This is true. We see this. Sometimes you see the consequence right, right away. Sometimes it takes a little time, but it doesn't mean that the consequence is not coming. It's there. Law of compensation. We are rewarded for the right actions. And here I say compensation is not what the matrix tells you and that compensation is only money. We are rewarded in favor, in graces, in blessings. We reap what we sow. This is a true thing. Law of relativity. It's all relative. It's all proportionately relative. So this goes back to when I am delivering energy to someone who doesn't have a lot of energy to exchange with me for the service. So they put up very little or nothing in form of energy exchange. And I deliver a full session, 100% committed. But they literally invested very little. They actually get very little out of it because they have not invested in themselves. So it is all relative. Law of polarity, two sides to everything, light and dark, positive and negative, yin and yang. And where you go, typically sometimes you, tra you traverse one direction just to turn around and come back and traverse it another way, right? So pretty simple. And the last one, law of rhythm, nothing is permanent and everything has frequency and vibration. Everything evolves over time, whether you're actively trying to do it or not, because of the frequency and vibration, it is just the way that things traverse throughout the universe. So I ask you to really sit with these because I think when you're foreign to it, you've never heard of it before, it takes a little bit. But also whenever you sit with it, each individual one, you can see how that would affect free will choice. But really when you, when you weave them all together, those are the components of honoring free will choice that definitely do pay off or not in our consequences, in our karma, in our energy. So whenever Source and Mother Sophia and the Archangels speak of free will choice, I will be completely honest with you. And I've had many conversations with Source asking very specific things. And the answers that I get are oftentimes, this is a consequence of free will choice. And this is mostly in, in relationship to other people, places, and things. And... I'm really, you know, I'm really human at times. And I go, well, what about my free will choice? 
And yes, my free will choice matters as much as anyone else's. But again, it is the dark ones who don't give a shit about universal laws because they understand where they're headed and they trample all over them, which again brings up an opportunity for me to either cho choose higher consciousness and higher timeline or lower consciousness and lower timeline. And it is when we have free will choice in our reaction to other actions, right? And so that's why whenever I trigger people or when I'm talking about being triggered, I do always advise taking a pause. Take a pause before you attack. Because this is your moment to choose your reaction of free will choice. And your choices, although you can point the finger and say, I said this because you said that, you're in control of your body. I'm not. I'm in control of my body. I'm in control of my mind and what my mouth says most of the time. When we really do understand understand that it is about us it is about our energy it is about how we choose to deliver that energy are we just going to keep throwing daggers at, at those that throw daggers at us well i'll bring you back to a couple of ascendant masters that are very wise much more so than i am first one ascendant master mary says your destiny is a promise you made to yourself Turning away from your heart is breaking that promise. My, Ascendant Master Mary, greatest delight is when you recognize me, meaning Ascendant Master Mary, as your equal and experience me as an essential ally, a close friend, a confidant, and a divine reflection for your human journey. So whenever you find yourself reacting to something, person, place, or thing, in direct relativity to their choices, you're choosing to align to their frequency. So you know the saying, I'm not going to lower myself to their level. Well, that's born in truth, but it's about frequency, right? It's not uh, meant to be like a hierarchy. It's about your frequency, which is your power. So don't lower your frequency to meet an attack with another attack. Instead, I offer to rise above. We have been told over and over and over again that love is the key. Love is the key. Love is the answer. Love is the most powerful force ever. Love, true love. So to those that have done their shadow work and have worked through this, this um, always having to have the last word and, and keeping score and being very judgmental, when you work through all of that, you can then hear the same things that have triggered you your entire life and it no longer triggers you. Not only that, but you are tapped into the heart space and you are delivering love, compassion, and kindness, empathy in a way that you've never really done before. And it feels amazing. It feels good on your end. It feels even better on the receiving end of those who actually attacked you. So prime example, let's say our fictional character today's name is Pam. If you're, if you're a Pam and you're watching me, maybe this was your energy that was talking to me. I don't know. Pam used to always fight back every time she was triggered. Pam did a great deal of soul expansion, AKA shadow work. And now Pam understands that these are actions of a wounded soul. Wisdom from Kuan Yin. Pam chooses to send love to them. Because she genuinely wants to deliver love and a message that says, it's okay, I won't hurt you. Pam chooses to forgive all parties 
involved for all acts. True forgiveness. None of that I'm going to forgive, but I won't forget business. Nope. True, complete forgiveness. Pam then gives gratitude for the soul growth and lessons. And as that weight has lifted from her because she has let it go, the chains are broken. The chains of that trigger and all that it used to be tied to no longer weigh her down and her frequency rises. And that love that she sent out is also rising the frequency of her attackers. Think about that. So when you find yourself reacting in kind, you're choosing low frequency response. I challenge you instead to react in kindness, high frequency response, love, forgiveness, gratitude. This is huge aspects of soul expansion and it takes real work to get there, but it is absolutely possible. I am a testament and so are so many others. So free will choice of yourself, free will choice of others has to be a consideration, should be respected at all cons. Consideration of free will choice with regards to consequences of all involved. Consequences of a free will choice is not always the same. Choosing high frequency is a positive, will, will give you a positive reward. That reward for choosing the right thing. Choosing the low frequency is going to give you a reward as well, but it's going to be negative. Meant to course correct you back in alignment to source creator and the divine. Choosing to send love because love is the most powerful force ever. That is an immediate frequency change for everyone. Immediate frequency change. Choosing to forgive all. Forgiveness frees us of those burdens and frees us all of the chains that none of us really need to carry around day after day, month after month, decade after decade. Choosing to be in gratitude for these lessons it is what enables us to embody unity consciousness. And unity consciousness is the fifth dimension. So if you find yourself still very triggered, still very um, having to have a life's word, having to be right, having to keep feel like you're having to keep score, having to exact an, an attack in kind, I invite you to start on your shadow work because there, there's definitely growth that, that is needed at this time. If you find that you've moved out of that and the space is new, uncharted territory, but it feels really, really good because you're in alignment and you're in flow. And you're in a, a space of love and gratitude and you're no longer responding because this thing up here is telling you all sorts of egoic manipulations, but it's because you're feeling in your heart space and your heart space is saying that is such a wounded soul. What they are sending to you is more about them than it is about you. Send them love. Send them love. It sounds contrite whenever you haven't done the work, but when you've done the work, you can truly send love to someone who may have been a sworn enemy and you are genuine with their, in, with the intentions of them rising up out of that cesspool of hate as well, because those that just exude toxic emotions and words and actions are themselves suffering the most they are so i invite you to violetlotusenergy.com sign up for your qet session let's get you on the road to being clear so that you can navigate the journeys of life a lot easier going with the flow instead of being forced to make decisions that you think are going to help you but they really won't I'll see you again next time. You guys take care.